Hello there everybody and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be going into 3.7 body senses. It's the last topic review video of unit 3. And while this might be the last topic review video, it's not the last video. I also have a summary video which will cover all the major concepts in unit 3. The summary video has a study guide that goes right along with it with answer keys and practice quiz questions. That way you can make sure that you're ready for your unit test or that AP test. If you need any of those resources, you can find them in my ultimate review packet, which is located in the description of this video. But enough about about that, we still have to go into 3.7. Throughout this unit, we've talked about sight, hearing, taste, and smell, and today we're going to be talking about touch. Starting out with the epidermis, which is the outside layer of your skin. The epidermis creates a barrier to protect you. It's what gives you your skin color. It's waterproof and keeps foreign pathogens out of your body. Below the epidermis is the dermis, which is made up of two layers. The dermis is made up of a connective tissue. It's where your blood vessels and nerve endings are located. This not only allows for oxygen to get to the epidermis, but but it's also where you get your sense of touch and pain from. Quick fun random fact, this is also where your hair follicles are located. The nerve endings in the dermis will send signals down through the dermis to a cell body which will pass the signal onto the brain. This is also where the nociceptors or pain receptors are located. These sensory receptors are what detect painful stimuli, painful temperatures, pressures, or chemicals. Nociceptors only fire a signal when a certain threshold is met and something is happening that could cause or is causing damage to you. Everyone's pain threshold is different and different things can impact it, such as your culture, upbringing, or gender, just to name a few. Pain is not simply a physical sensation. The brain plays a huge role. This is why phenomena such as phantom limb sensations can occur. Phantom limb is where individuals who have lost a body part have pain where that body part is supposed to be. There are no physical nerve endings present. However, the body is still interpreting information as pain. The sensation of touch is our ability to perceive objects in contact with our skin. The sensations we get from touch are a mix of feelings of temperatures, pressures, and pain. With a mix of pressures and temperatures, we may feel a tickle or an itch. Or have you ever sat down on a very cold surface and thought for a moment that you might have sat down on something wet? This is because of how our touch sensations are being perceived. Our brain is very connected with how we perceive these sensations. For example, if you try to tickle yourself, you'll not get the same reaction as when someone else tries to tickle you. Now underneath the dermis is the hypodermis. This is not really skin. Instead, this is a layer of fat. This helps insulate our tissues and absorb shock. This is the last layer before you get to your bones and organs. So we've already gone over skin, touch, and pain, but what about movement? When talking about movement, we are talking about kinesthesis. This is the perception of position and movement of individual body parts. Here we are focusing on the position and movement of our skeletal joints. In order for us to be able to move smoothly, our bodies have proprioceptors, which are sensory receptors located in various muscles and tendons that allow our brain to gain a better sense of the position and movement of our limbs. The brain also uses vestibular sense. Essentially, it's equilibrium, which is the body's movement and position. This is what allows us to balance. If you remember from our past topic review videos, we talked about the anatomy of the ear and the semicircular canals that enable our balance. Essentially, when you move your head, it shifts the liquid in the inner ear. This causes the cilia to move and sends messages to the brain about your movement and position. By now, you should have a better understanding of your different senses, but where your senses truly shine is when they interact. Sensory interaction is important because when our senses interact with one another, they influence each other and it allows us to understand the world around us. For example, the perception of flavor does not just come from your taste buds, it's also smell, temperature, and the texture of the food. Now one thing I want to highlight to make sure you don't make this mistake is sensory interaction is different from synesthesia. We talked about this in our Unit 3 Topic 3 video. Synesthesia, remember, is when one sense is stimulated and it also results at another sense being stimulated without an explanation. For example, being able to hear colors or taste shapes. Shapes. This is a neurological condition that is quite rare. And just like that, another unit video down. Now remember to watch the unit three summary video and check out that ultimate review packet. All the important information that you need to know for your unit test or that AP exam is in there. But don't forget also to practice right now. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section below. And if you found value in these videos, don't forget to hit subscribe and check out unit four. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you online.